We're so honored that you joined us for this week's message here at Hope Church in Kalispell, Montana. Our hope is that you will be encouraged and challenged in your relationship with Jesus. Be blessed as you listen to this week's message. All right, now, um, before I introduce Teresa, I just want to share briefly just a little bit about her. Um, she has, she loves spending time with her three grown children and her 13 siblings. I was joking with her. She must come from a Catholic family like me. But um, 13 siblings, that's amazing. And her friends, she currently serves as the associate pastor at His Place Church in Westminster, California, and which is a recovery church. Um, she, you're going to hear a little bit about what she does. But would you do me a favor? Would you, would you stand to your feet and give a very warm welcome to Miss Teresa Crabb? Good morning, Hope Church. What a great name for your church. Um, my name is Teresa, and I am the 13th of 14 kids, eight minutes older than my twin sister. Um, <laughs> let's pray. Father, we just invite you to come in power and to change our hearts and our thinking and to have um, just a beautiful morning in you that you would spur us on to be the light of the world. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Um, last night we did our conference, She Rises, and we looked at Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2. And I want to tell you just briefly a little bit about my story and why Arise and Shine is so meaningful to me with what I just went through in my life. So um, I was married for many years, 27 years total, but at year 23, um, my ex-husband and I were co-senior pastors of a vineyard church in Orange County, and we were the area pastors um, for Orange County for all the vineyard churches. And um, he started having some troubles, and we thought he was having um, like emotional breakdown. But long, long story short, it turned out he had an addiction to crystal meth. And... Um, so it took me about a year to figure that out. I knew nothing about the drug world. And um, so long, long story short, uh, we stepped out of ministry. I waited about two years hoping that he would be able to get back on track. He is doing a lot better right now, praise the Lord. Um, but we got divorced in 2018. And um, I, at the time, my kids right now are almost 30, almost 28, and just turned 19. And at the time, my 19-year-old was 13, and the other two were out already. Um, and so I literally, when I stepped out of ministry, I, my life was like upside down. I couldn't even wrap my head around. Like we had a thriving church, um, an amazing church, and my ex-husband was an amazing anointed man of God. That's why I think he had a target on his back, and I pray that he fully steps back into his calling. But um, anyhow, like we had to move, my 13-year-old and I, we moved four times in a year and a half because all of a sudden I had no job and no income and nowhere to live, and it was terrifying. But I knew God. I had roots in God, and I knew enough that every day I had to wake up and invite him into my anxiety and my fear and my brokenheartedness. And he showed up for me in every day. And, you know, I was sick. I lost 20 pounds. I, this is probably too much information, but I would wake up and throw up and go to work because I had to get up in the truth that I knew that God loved me. And my circumstances had changed, and my life had blown apart in the natural. But God had not changed. And we can't let the things that we don't understand get in the way of the things that we do understand. And I understood that Jesus' death on the cross was my foundation and that he loved me. And I didn't understand why everything was happening, but I knew that he loved me and that his death on the cross, that he would turn my sorrow into dancing. And so I'm still walking out that story. I don't know, you know, how that whole story ends, but... I didn't intend to be 53 years old and single and none of my kids yet walking with Jesus. 
And so as I wake up every day, I have to speak the truth to myself that God is with me and that he loves me and that I can shine in the middle of my brokenness. And I think the enemy comes along and he has lies and he whispers lies that we can't shine the light of Jesus unless we have it all together. And that's what keeps us back from sharing that light of God. But he actually wants to shine through our brokenness from one broken human being to another because the message isn't about us, it's him. We carry his light and his life. John says, in him was life, and that life was the light of man. And that's what we carry. So we're going to look first at Isaiah 60, and it says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness will cover the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear on you. So last night we talked about a rise and just how even gravity in the natural world wants to pull us down. And it's, it's uh, for me, every day I have to wake up and arise. It's, it's a command from God. Get up. And what that word means in the Hebrew is stand up. Come on the scene in a powerful way. And in our brokenness, God is calling us to stand up and come on to the scene of your life in a powerful way. And when you're in the middle of your brokenness and your pain, it's kind of hard to fathom coming on to the scene of your life in a powerful way. But sometimes that just means waking up and saying, Jesus, I invite you into my pain today and I ask you to heal me. And I pray that I could minister to someone else out there who's hurting. And um, usually that a command to arise, it's followed by an action. And in this case, the action is shine. So God says, get up and shine. And when God commands us to get up, he won't do that for us. It's something that we have to do. But on the same, in the same token, we can't do it apart from him. To get up, you need to have a motivation to get up. And you need strength in your legs to lift you up, right? Well, the Lord's love, is our, his unfailing love is the motivation that gets us up. And in our weakness, he is strong. He is our strength that lets us get up in him and walk in the calling on our life. And we, um, it says in verse 1, arise, shine. Why? Why should we arise, shine? For your light has come. Jesus has entered each one of your life, lives. And he has come in, and he is the reason your light has come. He's come into your darkness, and that's why we get up and we shine. And it says, the glory of the Lord has risen upon me. That word glory means the goodness, the abundance, the riches, the splendor, and the honor of God. When Moses said, God, show me your glory, God said, if you were to see my glory, you would die. But I'll turn around and walk past you, and I'll display the fullness of my goodness. And so when it says that the glory of the Lord has risen upon you, your circumstances might be really hard right now. And you might be like, oh, I don't feel the glory of the Lord upon me, the goodness of God upon me. But the goodness of God is upon you because our circumstances are not a barometer. They're not a measurement of the love of God in her life, right? Paul, the apostle, he was out in the open seas for a day and a night. Like, take your religious cap off and, oh, that was Paul the Apostle. Put yourself out in the middle of the cold ocean for a day and a night. Wouldn't you be going, where are you, God? I'm your Apostle. Like, but he went through that. God let him go through that, and yet people were healed when his handkerchief was put on them. So there's the power and the weakness together beautifully, right? He was beaten. He was whipped. He was chained, put in prison, beaten three times right short of death. And yet, the, the goodness of God had risen upon him. And in his weakness, God showcased his strength. And that's what God wants to do in whatever your circumstance you're going through, whatever your suffering is, because none of us get spared that suffering card. It looks very different for each one of us, but none of us get spared. Even Jesus learned obedience through suffering. And if we will surrender, that word surrender, give up, the reins of our life and say, Jesus, make something beautiful out of my ashes. He will. And he will not only heal you 
in your brokenness. But he will then send you out to help others receive healing for what you've walked through because you'll carry a new authority once you've walked through that healing and let him in. And it says, um, for behold, darkness will cover the earth in verse 2 and deep darkness the peoples. And I just want to talk figuratively, light is truth and knowledge and light and warmth. But it says that darkness will cover the earth. And I think we can all agree, there's one thing we can all agree on, is that darkness right now is covering the earth. Figuratively, darkness refers to death, misery, confusion, wickedness, ignorance, and sorrow. And you know what, church? Like right now, the world doesn't need to know your political views. They don't need to know what you think about the vaccine. They need to know about the man who changed your life. And it's so easy for us to get distracted and talk about, oh, how we feel about the vaccine, how we feel about Biden, how we feel about blah, 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 which that's fine. But remember that you are the light of the world because his life is in you. And none of that will matter. COVID won't matter in a hundred years. But Jesus matters. And every person that you encounter is someone that he has called you to love. Whether that's sharing the gospel or just loving them or showing a kind smile or praying for their healing. Every person is a divine encounter that God has allowed to cross your path. And I want to represent Jesus well on this earth. Right? I want my hands to be his hands and my eyes to be his eyes. Um, And so the darkness will cover the earth, but it says in verse 2, the glory, his glory will appear on you. And I just love that. That this, you guys, I didn't read this verse for service, but I want to read it right now. His glory will shine through you. This message isn't about you. You don't have to have it all together to let his light shine through you. As a matter of fact, it's more attractive to the world that's wanting real and raw that you be honest with your weakness and talk about this amazing man because he's your righteousness. In um, 2 Corinthians, this won't go up there, I don't think, because I just pulled it up in my heart seconds uh, during worship. In 2 Corinthians 4, 5, it says, We do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord and ourselves as your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. We are afflicted in every way, but we're not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken struck down but not destroyed, always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our body. Isn't that beautiful? So let's look at our main text for the day, and it's just a couple verses in Matthew 5, and we're going to read verses 14, 15, and 16. And it says, because Isaiah said to arise and shine. So we're going to talk about What does shining look like on this dark earth? And in verse 14, Jesus is talking, and he says, You, Hope Church, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but the lampstand, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men, in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So first of all, it says, you are the light of the world. Jesus said, uh, well, in John it says, in him was life, in Jesus, and that life was the light of man. And I talked about last night, like if I put all of you on that side of the room and we turned off all the lights, it would be pitch black in here. And if I said, ready, set, go, everybody go to the other side of the room, I guarantee you, you would be bumping into chairs, you'd be bumping into people, there'd be needless injury, nobody would be strutting through with confidence or running through, we'd be groping around, you know, trying to find our way. But with the flip of one light switch, there's order, and the chaos leaves, 
and we all walk with confidence because we know we can see reality Jesus is the light in this world that brings reality and truth in a day where it says out there oh that's your truth that's good no there's truth if you jump off a building the truth is you're gonna fall hard the world would say oh if your truth says you can fly you can fly well no there is a truth that you can't fly you're gonna hit hard and Jesus is that truth he is that light and he says that be oh so it says in him was life and that life was the light of man and it says he came to his own but his own received him not but to any who would receive him he gave the right to become children of God and as we receive him he fills us with his light it's not our own it doesn't immediately make us perfect we're immediately justified and washed and cleaned in the blood of Jesus but our sanctification our character becoming more like Jesus that's a daily that's as we behold him we become like him but you are not disqualified to share his light while you're in process and being sanctified and being made more like him and that is beautiful that means day one in your faith you can be out sharing him with others so verse 14 says you are the light of the world a city set on a hill cannot be hidden nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket I, I was thinking like you know we don't really light lamps anymore like we turn on our flashlights on our cell phone um, but you know like sometimes if I can't see the keyhole to get my key in like I flip on my cell phone light but there's a purpose so that I can see I would never turn on that light and then put it in my purse and that's what it's saying right here it's saying you're a light why are you gonna cover it up but the fact that Jesus is saying don't cover it up under a basket the reason Jesus is saying that is because naturally we want to cover it up he's telling us don't cover it up because we need to hear that because we naturally want to cover it up and I think some of the things that the reasons why we want to cover it up is because we look at our own brokenness we look at all the mistakes we've made all the sin the things we're embarrassed about all of our failure and our weakness and we disqualify ourselves from shining that light and so we cover it up because we're embarrassed that we're not qualified we're not pure enough holy enough to share that and Jesus is saying no you are the light and you let that light shine in your brokenness it says um, it will give light to all who are in the house everybody that God's put in the path of your life and it says let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven that word let your light shine that means allow like only you are the keeper of what you let in and out of your life I hear people saying oh if my husband would just want to do this with me or seek the Lord with me or my wife would just go to that meeting with me yeah we all wish for that but basically stay in your own lane and you let Jesus shine his light through you in your marriage on your family on your neighbors on your co-workers but you have to let you have to allow that light to shine before men in such a way what does that mean in such a way that they see your good works and glorify your father when we walk in humility and we love God and we love others that is shining our light in a way that lets others say oh wow that's God in her I see Jesus in him and sometimes they get confused and they'll just say oh you're such a good person and I'm very quick to say oh no I'm actually really not but I, if you think that that's Jesus in me that's him in me but I wanted to talk about um, letting our light shine in a way that glorifies the Father you know light you guys travels at 186,000 miles per second I just did a car ride from Orange County California to Seattle and it was so long <laughs> and we're going like 75 sorry Lord um, and it still took so long light Jesus is light he wants to get out let Jesus out of you <laughs> he wants to shine he wants to bring warmth he wants to bring life to the lost people around you and Satan comes along and says oh they're fine they're fine they're not fine I sat in a room with women Friday night and they're all wonderful amazing leaders but we all have a story and we're all hurting and Jesus came in and rescued us 
and the people out there, they haven't been rescued yet. And we want to let our light shine in a way that brings the Father glory. So let's talk about what does that look like. Well, first of all, it's how do we let our light shine? In humility. We have to learn to live in a lifestyle of repentance where we know how to own our stuff, our sin, our ugliness, and make keep peace with God and keep peace with people that we hurt. And when I first, when God, I was a baby Christian and God asked me to repent, it was very hard for me. Like he told me to repent to my roommate because I had got mad at her for how she treated the other roommate. But I didn't do it. I, I like was mean to her because she was mean to the other roommate. Isn't that brilliant? Um, but he said, you go apologize. And I was like, no, I like, she was mean to her. And he's like, yeah, and you were mean to her, but it was very hard for me the first time to go actually repent to someone. And I got up and I got to the door and then I turned around and came back down. No, Lord, I don't want to do it. She started. Around. Anyhow, I finally went and said, I'm sorry for the way I treated you. I don't like how you treated her, but I'm, I'm really sorry for how I treated you. Will you forgive me? And that was the beginning of me learning how to repent. And I could tell you many other funny stories. I told some first service. I don't think I have time for that right now. But learning to live in a way where you can own when you hurt somebody. And you can go say, David and Elizabeth actually taught me these words. Um, I can't remember them right now. Yes. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Please forgive me. I love you. David actually reminded me right before I came up, just remember Elizabeth and I taught you everything you know. <laughs> hey, thank you, David. Thank you, David. Anyways, um, we have to learn to make it right with God. When you sin, I used to like have an anger problem, and after I would sin in my anger, I would kind of avoid God for about two or three days. Because I didn't, one, number one, want him to tell me I had to apologize to anyone. And number two, I felt unworthy to come back to him. But that's so not the heart of God. The only, as we humble ourselves, he comes near. The only people that he distances himself from are those who think they have no need of him. And so when you sin, if you can get in that habit, no matter what your feelings are telling you, no matter what your mind is telling you, to run back to Jesus. When Peter denied Jesus three times, and then he's in the boat fishing, and Jesus says, you know, throw the nets on the other side, and he does, and John goes, it's the Lord. Peter, even though he had denied Jesus three times with cussing and swearing and all, dives into the water and swims to him. He has to get near to his Savior again. And that's how we need to be. We need to run back to Jesus when we blow it and repent and get right and move forward and not waste a day. So we have to walk in humility and shine that light in humility. And the second thing is that we have to listen to his voice on a daily basis. And that is a tricky thing because we don't always know if it's God or not when he's speaking to us, right? But I want to tell you, I have never, ever regretted stepping out in faith and telling someone that Jesus loves them. Even when I heard words that I thought were God that maybe were wrong, I have never, ever regretted it. Um, I, I had a story once where I was in a store shopping, and I felt like God said, go tell that girl that her mother is going to be okay. And I was like, is that you, Lord? I don't know if that's you or if that's just me. So I'm like kind of stalking her, like pushing the cart around, like... <laughs> You know, like, I don't really want to talk to her. I'm, I don't know her. It's hard to walk up to someone you don't know, but I don't want to miss out on something God might do. And so, like, you know, I'm just following her around from a distance. <laughs> kind of creepy. Anyways, finally she's leaving, leaving the store, and so I'm, like, run up to her, and I'm like, hey, I know this is strange. I don't chase people every day, which is, like, becoming a lie. Um, and I said, I felt like God, I, I followed Jesus, and I believe he speaks to people today. And I'm not sure if this is him or not, but I felt like he said to tell you that your mom's going to be okay. Is, is your mom sick? And she looks at me, she was so sweet, and she's like, well, she does have a cold. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me, Lord? You could have stopped me, but anyways. And I said, well, can I pray for her cold? <laughs> But you know what? Like, we connected. She was like, thank you so much. 
And I go, you know, if you go home and find out some that your mom has something or whatever, she's going to be okay. <laughs> but my point is, is I believe that God honors the heart that's trying to hear. And there have been other times when I have, like, heard from God where I, I was walking out of a restaurant, a church staff meeting, and I, a guy was walking this way and my car was that way and the Lord said, go share him, with him. And I was like, no, I have a meeting. I have to be somewhere. I don't even know if that's you. You know, the whole thing that goes on in your head. And, um, and then an ambulance went by with the siren and I felt like the Lord said, this is an emergency in the spirit. So by now I'm like halfway across the parking lot and I'm like, shoot, dang. So I shift. <laughs> Which is repentance, right? Repentance is turning and coming in agreement with God. Now he's way far away because we've been going, you know, opposite. So now I'm running through the parking lot, this dorky lady, and his window's up and he's in his car, so I have to tap on the window. Excuse me. He only speaks Spanish. I speak Spanish, but not great. But I am able to get through to him. Do you know Jesus? Have you ever heard about Jesus? And he said, no. I've heard of him, but I don't know him. And I said, may I share him with you? I felt like God told me to tell you. And that man prayed with me to receive the Lord right then and there. Yeah. And I want to tell you one, one last story. Um, I was getting tacos with my kids. They were about maybe 9 and 11, 10 and 12. And um, I felt, I saw this woman sitting in this taco place and her head was down and she just looked distraught. And I couldn't stop. Like God was pulling my heart toward her. And I said, um, I, I think I'm supposed to talk to her kids. And they're like, whatever, mom, you know, they're used to me doing that. So finally she leaves. This is so me, like waiting till they leave and I have to go chase them. And she leaves and her door is shut. And again, I tap on the window and I said, I don't mean to scare you. Um, I'm Teresa. I followed Jesus, but I felt like he wanted me to tell you that Jesus loves you, that he's real. And she started bawling, and she goes, I just looked to heaven, and I just said, are you even there? Are you even real? And you knock on my door. And you know what? I prayed with her. I gave her my phone number. She never called me, but that's not my responsibility. I let my light shine. I want to tell you one last story, and then I'm going to close. I was in court. One of our girls, who was a new believer... This was like 12 years ago. She's actually going to become a citizen this week. Uh, she was brought here when she was three, and she was 36 when this happened. She was a shoplifter. She used to steal to provide for her kids because she was a single mom. And then she um, met the people handing out bread at her apartment from our church. So she started coming to church, and she got born again. She got on fire. But then she got pulled over, and she had um, not finished all the community service for shoplifting, blah, blah, blah. They threw her in jail. So I was at that trial that she was at, and there was a beautiful couple next to me, and I felt the Lord saying, talk to them, talk to them, talk to them. And they seemed like they were just whispering and huddled together, which is even harder to, like, huh, you know, try to shoot the breeze when clearly they don't want to shoot the breeze. And so finally I just said, um, hey, you know, can I pray for you guys? And the guy goes, we believe, we believe. Yeah, pray for us. We believe. <laughs> And she is this gorgeous girl from Guam, and she's like a deer in the headlights. Long story short, I prayed for them. I gave them my card. I said, if you need anything, just call me. Well, she called me like at 1 o'clock in the morning an hour, a week later. She said, I just got out of the hospital. I just found out I'm pregnant. You know, will you, whatever you did for me in that courtroom, can you do that for me right now? So I prayed for her on the phone. She came to church, and she got saved. And I actually delivered that baby. I got to cut that umbilical cord because the We Believe guy, he got put in jail very soon after that for falsifying checks. And um, she had no one to be with her when that baby was born. And I got to be in the room and cut the cord for that new life. And so church, I just want to say, take, take the basket off the light. Don't let your brokenness get in the way. One time, the Lord told me to share with a kid. I was dropping off this, my, my son's friend. His name was Jeff. And he was a quiet kid. He was a user, a drug user. And I, I was awkward with him because he was so awkward with me, and I didn't know what, you know, how to, to say to him. And he didn't want to talk to me. 
And I dropped him off, and as he got out of my car, I felt the Lord say, go tell him how much I love him. And I shrunk back, church. I didn't rise. I didn't let my light shine, and that kid overdosed and died that month. And I know I'm forgiven. I know I'm not responsible for anybody's overall salvation. But I tell you, I have never regretted letting my light shine and being wrong and being a dork. I've never regretted that. But I have regretted many times, like, I wonder what God wanted to do there. I wonder what I missed out on there. And so this morning, I just want to pray, if you want to pray with me, that you would open your heart up to the world around you and know how loved, how perfectly loved you are with all your faults and all your sins. And that you would let that light shine and tell this world about the man Jesus who loves them perfectly and who will never fail them. And so I'm going to say a prayer this morning, if you'd like to repeat after me, if if you just want to say yes again to the Lord, to letting his light shine through you. So dear Father, I invite you. Repeat after me if you want, if you want to do this. I invite you into my heart. I ask you to forgive me for putting a basket over your light. And I pray that you'd help me to let you shine and to have full reign in my heart. And that as freely I have been given, I would give freely. And I pray you'd touch many lives around me and people would be saved and come to know you. And I thank you that you will do that. And I look forward to seeing what you do in my weakness. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us for this week's message from Hope Church. If you enjoyed this message, you can easily support the ministry of Hope Church at hopechurchmt.com slash give. Also follow us on social media at Hope Church MT. Be blessed and have a great week.